102.1 WROI, WROIFM.com, streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio and soon-to-be video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Brant's back in the studio. Hello. Hi. I didn't leave. Got your own coffee cup yet? My own coffee cup? Yeah. Not yet. Not yet? All right. We'll work on that, okay? I look forward to it. I don't have one yet. It's been 10 years. (laughs) That's John Alley. He's President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here today. Hey, my pleasure. All right. Let's talk about the Board of Trustees. Board meeting yesterday. yesterday. We finally... uh, Every year we go through an independent audit uh, that come in and want to certify that what we say on our financials are really what we did. So uh, that presentation was yesterday to the board. BKD was the firm, and uh, it's a new firm for us. We'd been using Blue and Company. One of the things I like to do is every five to seven years to switch audit firms. Uh, not because the other one did a bad right. job. It's just that staff and myself, you kind of know what they're going to be looking for. So if you ever had that p- potential for somebody wanting to do something inappropriate you know it kind of makes it easier with a new audit firm we don't know what they're going to be looking at so it gives a fresh set of eyes so they came in did that presentation for us yesterday to the board got an unqualified opinion which is what we are looking for that means that there was no issues they found there was no material adjustments they need to make and uh so that's you know it's kind of good that you know confidence in the staff that we've got uh, our processes in place that we need to have to make sure we're doing things right uh, each year we get a, you know one of their audit comments is well you need more segregation of duties hard to do in a small facility i so think you've had that comment we, before, we've had it every yes, year that's what i thought and, uh, you know we tried to see how can we move some stuff around so we don't have the same person you know controlling a, a major portion of any one process but just kind of difficult in a small facility but we keep trying can we move some stuff around to try to you know, meet some of the standards. And they even said, you know, if to truly meet the standards, we need to hire about another 25 accountants. So uh, that's not going to happen. But we're, we're, we're doing a pretty good job. Very pleased with the results this year that uh, no audit adjustments and we did get our unqualified opinion. Kind of shows everybody's on the same page. That we're doing what we need to do. And, you know, it's kind of tough when you start considering the number of regulations that we have as far as reporting and how we're, you know, financially to report and do things that uh, tells me the staff doing a good job keeping on top of those changes and making sure we're adjusting. As those come out, we're adjusting our operations. Also had Rick Dennis, who's our Director of Respiratory uh, Services, uh, needs to replace his PFT, which is a pulmonary function test machine, okay. which is a very vital component uh, if you have any type of lung disease. Current unit we have is eight years old, and they're, they're designed to be about five years, and so we've gotten our monies out of that. Uh, we're just starting to have reliability issues with it. Through a test, it might just shut itself off for no reason. So it was one of those uh, kind of a no-brainer. The board said, yeah, we need to get this in here. It's a nice diagnostic tool for our physicians, and it you know saves the patient have to travel somewhere else to get that done. So uh, they did approve the purchase of that. And then uh, Travis Albright, who's over our information services, came in and... Uh, Part of our follow-up to our cyber attack we had the first of the year was one of the recommendations, we had what was called a flat network. That means all of the devices in the hospital were all connected to each other through one network. Well, that opens up a lot of doors if somebody wants to come in and hack into our system. So we're going to be replacing that. Some of the units were old anyway, need to be replaced on the switches. So uh, that's going to take probably a month or so. We have to replace all the devices, uh, the switches and controllers for the computers. But it's going to allow us to segregate those. So we're not going to have all of them together. So each one will have its own kind of like a subnet, for lack of a better term. So if we do see an attack on one area, we can isolate it so it doesn't get to the whole hospital. And, you know, we've been uh, kind of learned our lesson, you know, when we had our attack before that, uh, you know, the more doors you put up, make somebody get through, the less likely they're going to do it. So we're trying to put as many doors as we can. And if they get through one or two, maybe they'll get discouraged and go somewhere else. And just cyber attacks is a big thing anymore. It is. You, know, you read about it just about every day. I think there was a new one I just right. heard this morning. I haven't seen details on it yet, kind of nationwide, another cyber attack. And one of the, one of the pharmaceutical companies, Merck, I think, was hit by that yeah. cyber attack. And uh, So, you know, you just got to really put your firewalls in place and all the the things that are out there and you know when you start talking some of this technical stuff the you know they're 28 letter words but uh you know i said what thing jig do we need to make sure it doesn't happen again so that's kind of what we're working on put all those safety nets in place so that we do have a very secure network in the hospital so we can protect the information that's there but more importantly allow us to continue operating because when they attack your system you're dead you're you're down in the water and we've got to the point everything is so computerized now it's very difficult 
to kind of go back and realize sure. you know not too long ago we did this all with pen and paper and uh, you know some of the new staff you, know, you look at them they go well, what's how do you do that so <laughs> makes you feel real old when they they don't remember some of the good old days of pen and paper is that expensive to do john it's very expensive you know this project uh, just to replace all those network devices it's going to be around one hundred and sixty one thousand dollars fortunately you know the the vendors that put this equipment out realize it's expensive and so, you know, they're offering us uh, five years, no interest. So, you know, we can do it over a, a month at a time instead of having to pay all that money up front. So that helps from the cash flow perspective. But really need to get this done to really, that is kind of the final phase of our protection for our information system. And I think once we get that in, you know, nothing's 100%. But it's going to put us up there, so it's going to be very, very difficult for somebody to get in and hack our system. But like anything, if one in bad enough and you have enough resources, you know, they could probably still penetrate. But what we're hoping is, again, they get tired of trying and find somebody easier and uh, let them move on and, and find a much easier target to get into. So, Well, we're talking about computer technology, John. I know that Woodlawn encourages their patients to file their information online to find their information online Correct. to set up the portal to do that yeah we've got the portal set up both through the physician offices and the hospital and one of the things a lot of folks don't understand is as we move forward our reimbursement from the government payer sources is based on whether or not the patient uses that portal so you know we're trying to really i, I think that's a, i think that's an excellent point Case an example is me, and I've I have just uh, sloughed it off a couple times, but I need to do that. Yeah, set up that portal so we can have right. that that communication back and forth. Because what the you know the ultimate goal is ten years from now is that no matter where you go, your medical record can be accessible. So if you're on vacation somewhere and have an accident, you know that facility can get online and instantly see what meds you're on, what tests you've had, which is for your safety sure. as you move around the country. Sure. And so it's, it's hard to get folks. Oh, I don't want to, and I'm. Kind of that same way, you know. I get those portal messages all the time. How much information do I want? Yeah, so out I there? just call the office and I say, John, use the portal, you know, right. because again, we have to demonstrate that folks are using that, because otherwise we get penalized for not having enough traffic over that, and so it cuts the reimbursement from the government payers. So we're probably going to start pushing that even more. For a while, you know, the the threshold was we'd have five percent. Then it went to 10. Well, now it's going to go to 40%. Wow. So we really got to start pushing that portal. And so if you haven't set up a portal yet, get with your provider or call the hospital. And it's fairly simple. Okay. We, we can set you up via the internet. Uh, you can get in. And at that point, you can access your records. So if you've had some lab work done, some x-rays, that data is out there. The messages from your physician, they can, you know, communicate How far with back? you. Well, that's, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I like on, I've looked at my record and yes. I've got stuff back there four and five years ago. Okay. So, it, you know, it does, it's not just current month. It maintains that history. So anytime you've been in, you can get into those records. So definitely encourage folks to get into that portal. Um, you know, not only does it makes it easier for you, you can set up appointments through there. You can make payments through there. You can see your, your results. It actually helps the hospital long term by helping the, you know us to get maximum reimbursement for the services we provide. Okay. So that, that project is coming. Probably go to, like I say, about a month, month right. and a half to do that once we get that started. So, you know, it's going to be a little inconvenient for the staff because you're taking, you it's know. It's a lot of information. Taking the system offline sure. for a little bit while you put the new unit in. So uh, we're, we're trying to map that out, make it as least intrusive as we can. Finally got into the financial report for May. Uh, gross revenue, about $11.8 million is what we billed out. Uh, we wrote off seven point five, dollars staying right in that, you know, about 60% of what we bill or so we write off. So, uh, you know, that left cash for us to play with, so to speak, <laughs> $4.6 million, and uh, we spent four point six. So we actually had a, a loss of about $2,000 $2, for the month. So pretty much a break even okay. for the month. You know, we, we're needing to start turning that black. We've had some red months here, two or three months in a row. And, you know, one of two things, we're doing too good a job of making people healthy. Our folks are, you know, they're they're just, we're not seeing the sickness, which is a good thing. You know, we kind of joke about that. You know, our business is dependent on other people's misery. But, uh, you know, as long as we can keep a healthy community, that's exactly. what we need to do. And sure. we'll adjust on our side if we need to, to make sure that, you know, the services are there when you need it. But we want a healthy community. That's uh, Ultimately, we'd like to put ourselves out of business and keep everybody healthy. Well, wellness is an important thing. It is. And, you know, you don't understand just some little things you can do. And, you know, one of the things that the hospital is kind of uh, sponsoring is this community walking program where exactly. a lot of teams are walking. 
and uh, we had a report you know number of total miles that's been turned in it's just phenomenal so i was talking to some of our staff who has done that and we have you know one individual said yeah i'm I'm walking every day and i said well how's that doing she goes i've lost 12 pounds excellent and says i feel the best i've ever felt and it's one of our more senior employees so it's you know it's not one of the kids so you know it just tells you by that little effort that they do and they say we try to walk five to seven miles a day and uh you know it seems like a lot, but if you start tracking your, your steps, it doesn't take a long time to get there. And you don't have to do it all at once. Don't have to do it all no. at once. And uh, so we're seeing that benefit that, you know, it is helping with the cardiovascular, you know, some weight loss. And they say, I feel better now than I've ever felt before just by doing that small thing of, you know, walking a little bit each day. So definitely promoting that. You know, you know, go out there and get your steps in. Uh, whether you track it or not, just go out and... Uh, Last night, perfect night. Perfect night to go walking last night. So, you know, go out and get outside, get some fresh air, and get some miles in. Exactly right. John Alley is with us, president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Any discussion in the trustees' meeting yesterday about the health care turmoil that's going on in Washington, D.C.? We, we have a little bit there. The, the bad part <laughs> is there's not an answer yet. There uh, is not. You know, you, you start looking at what's happening, and then the next day it gets changed. And then the next day, well, you know, those who were, vo- were going to vote for it said, now I'm not. So it's really up in the air. Um, you know, one of the things that's kind of disheartening for us is, you know, we're getting notification as we move into 2018. Probably by then, all those uh, plans in the state that was part of the uh, Obamacare or, you know, whatever you want to call it, are discontinuing their plans. They're stopping. They're just not going to offer them anymore because they're just not making money on those. So, you know, that leaves us kind of back to where we were four or five years ago. You know, folks who don't have the means to get insurance, now there's no product for them. So, you know, as we do our budget for next year, we got to put that in there. Some of the the things we're hearing from Washington is that they're going to cut down uh, Medicaid funding to the states. So that means less dollars for the states. So that means less dollars for the providers. So, you know, we have to react to that. And, you know, you, you, how do you handle that? We still want to treat the patients, but we've got to find other mechanisms, you know, to reduce our cost where we can so that, you know, we can stay as a viable institution. So it's, it's going to get more and more difficult for everybody as we move forward. And you just kind of, you know, got to figure out what can you do to adapt to these changes and make sure your organization can survive. John, is that lady still out there at Woodlawn Hospital who can help guide people through that yes, process? That's been a she was very valuable for us, and I just wondered if she was still there. Glad that worked out. Yeah, she, uh, you know, she knows all those plans that are she out does. there, and uh, will help guide you through it because it's a very, very complicated process. You know, to some of these forms you have to fill out, and if you've only you've never done it, and you look at it, you kind of get overwhelmed with it. The advantage is she knows all those; she can help you fill those forms out. Sometimes, you know, they get data that you don't have access to to help you get those done. So, yes, they're, they're still out there. ClaimAid is the company. They have an office in the hospital. And uh, I don't can't remember the number off the top of my head, but you can call the hospital uh, sure, operator sure. and they can get you connected with sure. her. And, uh, you know, sweet young girl, she helps you. Uh, you know, her job is to make sure to get the best she can for you and does an excellent job doing that. We get a lot of com- uh, compliments on, you know, I'm glad she was here. We could have never done this by herself. And one of the plans that uh, you and I had talked about here a while back was one that Woodlawn was not a part of, but is now. And so right. that uh, becomes a, a possibility as well. Yeah, what we try to do is we kind of in, try to keep in front of the new plans coming out. And sometimes, you know, one will slip through. So, you know, as soon as we find out about that, you know, which you kind of brought to my attention, I, we go back and say, okay, let's get in that. Because we want to make sure that, you know, we're providing coverage for you so if you've got a specific insurance plan we want to be part of that network and we're going to do whatever we can to get into it so that you know you are covered locally you don't have to go out of town to get your health care coverage is it your understanding then that anthem and mdys are pulling out at the end of this year that's what we're i know anthem is we received notification on it and i just heard uh, today that mdys has not officially announced but kind of saying we're probably going to be out of out of the pool come 2018 so you know, yeah, we're, we're starting to see more and more of those pulling out. And, uh, you know, that's unfortunate because it, it did serve a, a very vital need for a lot of folks that got them, you know, nice health care coverage for a low cost. Exactly right. John Alley, again, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Interesting times for the hospital business. It, it is. You know, everybody keeps saying, uh, you know, when are you going to retire? And I said, whenever I start getting bored. So I, it might I be another 20 years. Happen. Who no. knows? Yeah. I think you'll be here for a long <laughs> yeah. time then if it's going to come down to that. Yeah, it's John, very anything interesting. anything else you'd like to add this morning? But Just we appreciate it. Be careful on the 4th, Be right? careful on the 4th. You know, we've got that coming up. And, you know, be considerate of your neighbors. Um, 
enjoy your fourth of july but do remember a lot of us have to go to work that next day so <laughs> try to shut them off around 11 o'clock uh, please, please, please do that remember our yeah. pets too yes. don't like those as well yeah so be, just be careful with them i you know we we've got a lot of very powerful fireworks that can be purchased and, and uh, we just don't want to see you or you know, your family members come in with a very serious injury from you know these fireworks because you just you know you don't know how they're going to work and so be very careful with them all right john as always thanks very much for the report we appreciate it thank you 